This program is brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. The privilege and the honor of living under the covenant of grace is that we're no longer sweating or depending on our self-effort to try to get it done. Jesus got it done. We've got to now believe it, receive it, and say thank you. Calling all radical women. It's that time again to celebrate an infinite God who declares your worth. Join Pastor Taffy Dollar, Dr. D.B. Freeman, Laura Pickett, Sarah Jakes Roberts, and special musical guests, Miranda Curtis, Demita Chandler, and Todd Dulaney. Register today at taffydollar.org. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 10. Let's go ahead and get started now. So we're talking about stepping away from self-effort and stepping into the rest and the confidence of what Jesus has already done. The rest, the confidence, and the peace of what Jesus has already done. Uh, Chief, go in the back and get me a $200 bill out of my, my, my uh, wallet. Two $200 bills. Um, I know no matter how many times I do this illustration, it really nails it home as far as, you know, do you really believe what Jesus has done versus you working real hard to try to do something to get him to do it. I am telling you right now, listen to me, your healing was finished 2,000 years ago. So if you get sick today, healing's in the medicine cabinet done. Okay? Your deliverance has already been done and finished 2,000 years ago. Your deliverance is already done. Okay? But what's happening? It's like today, people still trying to do something to get what's already done instead of just taking it. Are you listening to me? It's already a finished work. When Jesus was on the cross, he said, it is finished. And you know what the church is doing? I don't believe it. I don't believe it. I got to add to that. He said it's finished. I got to add to that. And you keep trying to do stuff that's already been done. The, 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 the awesomeness of living under this new covenant is living by faith and what you, what, what, what he said is finished. Yeah. So when something occurs in my life, I just go back to the finished works of Jesus Christ, and, and I just believe that it's, it's a done deal, that it's already, already done. All right, Do we, teen, are the teenagers in here today? Yeah, y'all yeah, up now, ain't you? <laughs> Okay, I need a guy who's a teenager. Your initials are A.D. A.D. Is, are your initials A.D.? Are you a teenager? I can't see you. If, you, if, your na if, your name, if you're a teenager and your initials are A.D., come here. If you are a teenager and your initials... Uh, what is your... You're waving at me. Are you a teenager? <laughs> if your initials are A.D., come here. Okay, so you're, you're, you're not, your initials are not an AD. Uh, you got some teen leaders sitting back there? Send me two people up here that are teenagers that look like they broke. <laughs> I ain't got time to go through all this. No, 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 whoa, 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 whoa. no, 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 not, not today. No, you have to be sent. Did they send you? Come on. All right, did they send you? 
You sent them? Oh, okay. Come on. All right. They don't look like they broke. She don't look like she broke. It's Sunday. It's Sunday. You got to look more for Sunday. Okay. All right, yeah, y'all face them. All right, now. All right, do you agree with me? Let's do get on this side. We're going to do at a time. You stay right there. Do you agree with me that this is already finished? Yeah. It's already manufactured, right? Mm -hmm. There's, is there anything that needs to be done to this in order for it to be a $100 bill? No. All right, so what happens is, could you use $100? Yeah. Okay, so, <laughs> so this is already finished, right? Mm -hmm. It's a done deal. It really is, right? Yeah. It, you, 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 do you believe it's done? Yeah, it's finished. Okay, it's finished, right? Yeah. Okay, so, I, pause. She represents most of the church right now. Yeah, we agree. Oh, yeah, it's finished. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's done. Oh, yes, I believe it. Do you need it? Oh, yes, amen. But she is no better for none of that. Because here it sits, and she's still in need. All right, wait, 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 wait. Pause. And we laugh and we shout, oh, praise the Lord, but you still ain't, you still ain't got the $100 that's finished. She finally got it. It's finished, and that's what we do at church. Right. You know, do you believe that I'm healed? Mm-hmm. Do you believe that Jesus healed you? Yes, it's done. Okay, but you ain't going to get none of it until you what? Yeah. All right, now, so hopefully you just saw what we did, right? You saw the whole thing we just went through, right? Okay. Uh, could you use $100? Yes. And, and it's already done, right? Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Okay. All right. All right. Hold on. Hold on. Because she did something. She did something. She took it. Then she said, Thank you. Ladies, thank y'all so very much. <laughs> That's basically what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be taking, thank you, take you, thank you. But we sitting there like, huh? I wonder. See, when teenagers in the room, you got to get some money away to waking them up. <laughs> Heck of my ain't service end up talking about, give me some. <laughs> the privilege and the honor of living under the covenant of grace Amen. is that we're no longer sweating or depending on our self-effort to try to get it done. Jesus got it done. We've got to now believe it, receive it, and say thank you. Amen. Amen. Believe it, receive it. Say that out loud. Believe it, believe it. receive it. Receive it. Thank, you. thank you. If you're sick, believe it, receive it, thank you. Need a job? He's provided everything. Believe it, receive it, thank you. So what's the rest of your life? Your rest of your life is walking uh, like, like you already have it. So somebody asks you, say, well, you know, well, I heard you dying of cancer. You say, oh, no. I believe I received the healing that's already been done, and I've just been thanking God. Hallelujah. Don't sit up there and agree with them. Amen. Now, let's look at uh, what it means to rest. Hebrews chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Uh, let's start off at verse 1. I'll try to move a little quicker to get here. He said, Let us therefore fear, lest a promise being left of us enter into his rest. Entering into his rest. Now, when I say entering into his rest, the word rest doesn't mean inactivity. I'm not talking to you about being inactive. Don't do nothing. 
I come to you and say, are you resting in the truth that, 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 that you, you believe you receive a job? Yeah. That's why I'm home. I ain't going to do nothing but just stay in the bed all day. And that, that is not what he's talking about. It doesn't mean rest from work. It means rest in work. In other words, you're doing what you have to do, but you're not stressing and worrying about anything. Resting in work. It doesn't mean inactivity. A lot of Christians think, well, you just don't do nothing. No, 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 no. You know, Paul said, I did more than all of the disciples did, but he did it in rest and not in stress. You work in rest. And so he goes on, he says, verse 2, in verse 2, he says, um, For unto us was the gospel preached as, we, as well as unto them, but the Word, the Word preached, did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. I know this is referring to the gospel of the New Testament. Number one, it requires faith. The law doesn't require any faith, okay? And, and when you hear the word, when you hear the good news, the almost too good to be true news about what Jesus has done, he says, now will you appropriate or take possession of that with your faith? And the problem here is that they heard it preach, but they didn't mix it with faith. They didn't, they didn't receive it. They didn't believe it. Verse 3, he says, for we which have believed do enter into the rest. There it is. There it is. I believe it. I believe it. Now, now this is amazing scripture because he says, for the, the, the man that believes enters into the rest. So the authenticity of my, my belief is going to be determined by my rest. See, you're going to have to really judge yourself where this is concerned and say, you know what, let me see. A a am, am I in stress or am, or, or am I at rest? Oh, I believe I receive that I'm the righteousness of God. Well, am I in stress or rest? I believe I receive that I'm healed. Where, am I in stress or rest? Am I in stress or rest? The spirit of ease that comes over you rather than the spirit of dis-ease that comes over you. And what the enemy wants to do is to bring about dis-ease in your emotions, and he wants to trans that dis-easement in your emotions into disease in your physical body. But it becomes difficult for the enemy to do anything Amen. when you walk in a spirit of ease and rest Amen. in what Jesus has already done. Amen. I believe that your peace is your most valuable asset. So you got to make sure you're not spending your peace on somebody else's drama. Because stuff happens when you let your peace go. And you got to be careful of social media. I mean, you know, it can be used for good, but it can also be used for bullying, and it can be used for shaming. And, and, and you can wake up in the morning in the joy of the Lord and go get your phone and get on social media and somebody cussing you out, and you let, you let the comments you, rob you of your peace. You spent your peace on somebody's written comment that you can't even see. I remember the Lord told me that, I, I'm, and I just described me. I'm like, I was, oh, praise the Lord. Thank you having a good day looking at this. I'm like, you, 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 you. He, he said, it's your fault. You go there and spend your peace. Whose drama are you still spending your peace on? That's why you get tired of that. You get tired of the same old drama coming and trying to take your peace, and you keep paying for it. Sometimes you just got to say, you know what? Amen. Hey, bro, hear you, but this is too expensive for my peace. When you have to, when you have to spend your peace, it's too expensive. Amen. And some of y'all came to church this morning. You, let me go to church. Maybe I feel better. And then you're going to walk out of here and, and, and spend your peace again on something. It's too expensive. It's too expensive. W when is it too expensive? When it costs you your peace. That's, right. yeah. That's when you know it's too expensive. You can't afford that. 
somebody's drama or you dating somebody and they always got some drama in their life, your toxic relationship, you can't even pick up when it's toxic. You got, you're, you're in love with something and it's toxic. You're you spending your piece every hour for that person. Let that person go. That's not for you. you it, it's too expensive. That relationship costs too much. There go. You're talking about monetarily? No, I'm talking about your peace. When it gets down to any relationship that you got to spend your peace on, that's too expensive. I got to let you go. You're cute, but you're not cute enough for my salvation, but I got to let you go. <laughs> How do young folks say facts? Wow. And so he says, for we which have believed do enter into rest. Right now, let's make a decision to do that. Say, Father, Father I, believe, I believe, and right now, I enter into the rest of what you have done. Now, from this point on, everything around you is going to try to pull you out of that rest. And now comes the labor part, that I have to labor to stay at rest. I got to labor to keep my peace. Some folks, you look at them calling on your phone. I don't know why they keep following me. Well, get a revelation on block. <laughs> the anointing of block. You ain't got to put up there. Some of y'all want to, some of y'all like spending your peace. Some of y'all, yeah, some of y'all like drama. Some of y'all love drama. Y'all just love it, just love drama. Look at the little, what, what's these shows where they had all the real reality shows? It ain't nothing but, it ain't, it ain't, but it's just a bunch of drama. And, and y'all love drama. I don't know how you love drama. I don't like drama. I don't like being around drama. If I see drama come, I, I don't like that. I would rather be by myself for, for years than have to deal with somebody's drama all the time. But that ain't love, whatever. I ain't spending my peace on that stuff. Now, you can debate on what's love and what's not love, but I, 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 I am not, I can't do that. Because you being killed me and then wait on the next pastor and kill him too. I can't do that. <laughs> what other pastor that? Well, you died three months ago. Well, who are you? Yeah, no, I ain't doing that one. <laughs> you ain't killing me. I ain't, ain't, ain't going to be dying, falling out, looking all old, and <laughs> creeping like this. I ain't doing none of that. That ain't happening. hundred years old, gonna be still standing up here. What's up, boy? What's up? What's up? <laughs> Glory to God. Still playing cops and robbers at home, man. Tap. It'd be a little slower, but we, we still do it. But we, hallelujah. Glory be to God. <laughs> Everybody lift your hands up just like this and, and do this. Say, I receive peace. Walk out of here peaceful. Let that stuff roll off your back just like water off a duck's back. Let it go. Let it go. Sometimes God's trying to show you something, but you got too much static in your, in your mind. You, it's too much going on. You can't hardly hear because you got all that junk going on, thinking about who said what, when they said what, how come they didn't say this, what they did, this, when they come, they didn't show up, and I don't understand why they didn't do it, they come, and they did that. That's stupid. That's crazy. And God trying to get a little word in there. He can't get nothing in there. It's not that you can't hear from him. You're just too occupied with all that other junk. All right. For, I done read this about three, four times, ain't it? For we which have believed do enter into the rest as he, as he said, as I have sworn in my wrath, if they shall enter into my rest, although the works were finished from the foundations of the world. Verse 4, he says, for he spake in a certain place of the seventh day on this wise, and God did rest the seventh day from all his works. Now, it's so important that, yeah, okay, God rests the seventh day. He was demonstrating some, but the Sabbath, the Sabbath was a shadow of the reality, which, was, which is Jesus. In the Old Testament, you read it as the Sabbath day. That was the day that they took rest. We're not talking about a day. Colossians talks about the reality of the Sabbath. The, the Old Testament was a shadow of the reality of Jesus. Basically, everything leads to Jesus. Now, I'm saying all of that because Jesus is our Sabbath. We find rest in 
him. Oh, praise God. You find rest in Jesus and what he has done and what he means. That's why we take communion. We do this in remembrance of him. We find rest in what he's already finished. We find rest in what's already done. Jesus is my Sabbath. He's my rest. You ain't going to find rest in Mohammed. You ain't going to find rest in Buddha. But you will find rest in Jesus. Amen. Let's find that rest today. Amen. Amen. Go down to verse uh, 9 and 10. Uh, Hebrews 4, 9 and 10. He says, There remaineth therefore a rest to the people of God. Verse 10. For he that is entered into his rest, he also has ceased from his own works as God did from his. You're not going to enter into the rest operating by the law. As long as you continue to try to perform, to try to get God to do something, you're not going to enter into that rest. As long as you feel like I got to do this in order for God to do that, you haven't entered into that rest. As long as you feel like, you know, you, you've got to go on a fast 10 days every month in order for God to bless you or anoint you, you have not entered into that rest. You know, I thank God that in this new covenant, we can enter into a rest and find rest in what Jesus has already done. But there's still too many Christians sweating like sinners Trying to, trying to get the job done. I prophesy over this church today, sweatless victories. Ah, you hear what I said? You're going to start walking in victories that you didn't have to sweat to get. Your days of sweating are over. Why? Because you can find rest in Jesus, and you can find rest in what he has already done. Amen. Some of y'all going to find out you're not going to need that Tylenol when you get home today. Amen. Now, let's look at Joshua 24, 13, Deuteronomy 6 and 10. Now, somehow in, in teaching the law that came by Moses, we were convinced that God needs you to do your part in order for him to do his part. And so we came up with this little slogan. Well, no, some, some people th still think it's in the Bible. Well, Brother Dollar, God helps those who help themselves. That ain't in the Bible. That ain't in the Bible. God doesn't help those who help themselves. God helps those who need help. Well, where did that saying come from? You've heard me over and over and over again. Benjamin Franklin said that. See, we mix stuff like that and then talk about the Bible said that. We take songs and it's not even scripture and say the Bible said that. So now listen to this very carefully here now. I'm going to show you two places where God did stuff and he didn't need them. He did it anyway. Verse 13, he says, and I have given you a land for which you did not labor. So they got land without laboring. Cities which you built not and you dwell in them. Vineyards and olive yards, which you, you didn't even plant them. But God said, I did it without your labor. Oh, man. Look at Deuteronomy 6 and, and 10 through 13. See, let this really build your faith up. <laughs> let this build your faith up that, that God will do things in your life that you will not be able to give credit to your labor. Did you know worry is a wrong form of meditation? We all go through things in our life that bring about uncertainty and doubt. Some of y'all get up with the same worry that you went to sleep on, and you wake up and you continue in it, and you, you gotta let it go. I often think about moments where challenges have been at the forefront, and I've been tackling these challenges and they've now become priority. But then this message somehow just brought me back into trust. Dude, why am I complaining? I am too blessed to be complaining and worrying about this. It's gonna be all right. 
For a love gift of $20 or more, we would like to offer you The Contrast, Self-Effort versus Rest, four-message series. Because I'm resting in what Jesus has already promised. Somebody shout amen in this place. Call the number on the screen or go online to order today. Crep Low Dollar Ministries presents real ministry is when I can take what I have gone through and I can share it with you and hope that you can get something out of it to encourage you that if God can deliver him, then he can deliver me. And I'm telling you, the God of righteousness is at hand and he's waiting on you to believe that you are the righteousness of God. It's, it's a high, it's, it's, it's a thrill that it, it can be explained. You're definitely going to get what you need. God's definitely going to meet you here. There is an elevation, there is an upgrade, there is an advance for the people of God. I mean, you know, we got to lay hold of it and take it by faith. For me, I mean, I'm just sitting on the edge of my chair going, I want more, I want more, I want more. Join us in Trinidad and Tobago at the Hilton Trinidad Conference Center on January 31st and in Cleveland, Ohio at the Huntington Convention Center on March 6th. Call or go online to register today. I pray that this broadcast really blessed you today. Now, I believe in the grace of giving, and I know there are many of you out there who want to support this broadcast. Rest assured that when you support Creflo Dollar Ministries financially, you are giving to help in our efforts to spread the gospel all over the world by providing spiritual and physical help to those who are hurting and in need. God bless you. Your financial donations into this ministry work all over the world to change countless lives. If you'd like to support our efforts to save the lost, you may call in or visit CreflodollarMinistries.org today. God bless you. Can't make it to service? No problem. Join our online worldwide audience. Experience the same atmosphere of praise, worship, and teaching of God's Word from any mobile or smart device via our website, it is not a blessing to go around broke, busted, and disgusted. It is not a blessing to go around sick with cancer, about to die. It is not God's will for you to die. You can leave here when you get ready to go, praise God. That's the blessing of the Lord. Long life. Every mistake that you've ever made, every shortcoming that you've ever experienced, it is under the blood of Jesus. And Jesus is how God sees us. He sees us through his blood. We're excited that you've decided to stay involved as we continue our mission to flood this world with the gospel of grace and empower change in the lives of people all over the world. Because of you, Creflo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe.